everybody. Welcome. Just going to wait a couple minutes here for people to start joining the class. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a, I'm a little late. I had some technical difficulties just trying to get everything set up here. Um, there's a lot of noise, so I apologize for that. There's literally like 30 chickens all over the place around me. And I have a one guinea outside who is really loud. So I don't know if this is going to be annoying to watch or whatever because of all the commotion and the noise with the chickens and especially the guinea fowl. So sorry, I'm going to try my best to just teach this class. Um, let me know in the comments if you can hear me okay or if it's not much of a bother. Um, normally I do these live classes um, to teach about gardening, different types of gardening topics. Um, but today I thought, you know, let me try something a little bit different. Let me pull up the chat here. Um, if you guys could just let me know if you can hear me okay in the comments, I'd appreciate it. But, um, yeah, my name is Jara. If you're new here, this is the first time that you're watching one of my live classes. Like I was saying, I normally teach gardening type of related topics. But I thought, you know, let me try doing something a little bit different. Thank you for confirming that you can hear me. And show you guys um, my chickens. Because I always like to joke around that my best garden helper is not another human, it's my chickens. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how to utilize chickens to help you if you're gardening. And just the basics. Like if you don't have chickens and you've kind of been thinking about it. They're super loud. Sorry. I have like six roosters, by the way. But, um, so yeah, they're going to get loud. Um, you know, if you've been on the fence thinking about it, you're not sure, you don't know how to get started, or like, what are the bare requirements needed before you start buying stuff and getting chickens and all of that kind of stuff? Like, you need to make sure you can provide like the bare basics, right? So I'm just going to kind of review those things, also show you around, give you a tour of my coop. And then also kind of talk about how to use chickens in the garden. If you're a gardener, um, how can you make these animals do a lot of work for you so you don't have to break your own back? Um, so anyways, um, before we really get into everything, just a couple of reminders. Um, this class will be uploaded to my YouTube channel under the live section after we're done here. So if you miss something or we get disconnected or whatever, you can find it on my YouTube channel. And um, once the class, I don't know if you guys can hear me when they're crowing at the same time, but I'm trying. Um, once the class is uploaded, I will update the description and everything and kind of put links and info in there for things that I mentioned. So if you guys want to find maybe the same bird netting I'm using or a little... See them right there. I swear, they know that I'm doing this. That's why they're being extra loud. But... Um, that way you guys can find like these supplies and things that I'm talking about. So I'll put that in the description. Normally after my classes, I send like a summary email to everyone that's in my summary or in my email group. But since it's not garden related, I didn't want to like flood people's emails. So if you want the information this time, it'll be in the um, description of the live class. And um, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notifications of when I go live. I like doing these classes. They're a little bit random. It just depends what I'm doing, you know, at the time in my garden or, you know, out here with the chickens. So there's no, like, schedule. Um, I try to do them, like, one a month or something like that about, you know, whatever topic. But that's not guaranteed either, especially now that things are starting to warm up. It's really hard to stay outside for an extended period of time to do, you know, a class. And it's even harder for me to shoot YouTube videos. I'm in Florida. I'm zone 10A. Um, March is definitely starting to get too hot already. So some of you are still covered in snow, but March is already starting to get way too hot. So I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. Um, I did have another plan, a uh, class planned for March 10th, so in about two weeks, about herb gardening. And then I just realized today that that's the last weekend I have before I go on vacation. I'm actually going to Japan for like two weeks. 
So um, I'm probably gonna have to reschedule that class. I'm sorry guys. So if you saw that notice and stuff I was putting out about that class, I'm gonna have to reschedule it because I gotta get ready for that trip and prepare my garden um, so things don't die while I'm gone. I have to install some more like drip irrigation things and stuff like that. I put it on an automatic um, system and that way I know things aren't dead <laughs> when I come back. It's very hard to take a vacation when you're a gardener because um, I can't relax knowing like what am I going to come home to so I'm going to try my best to just get everything nice and prepped But um, yeah, these classes are random the best way to find out about them is to join my email group So there's a link on my website at the top. <laughs> It'll say like email um, group or newsletter group something like that and you just enter your email that way you get um, Subscribed and you get those notices of when I do them. So um, if you want more about raising chickens besides what I am um, providing today because today is like just the basics right um, I am doing a whole series I'm uh, currently filming that right now about you know differences between chicken breeds um, egg sizes how do you pick the right breed for you um, just different topics right about raising chickens um, it's a lot of information so uh, cannot just do it all in one video so there will be more information coming along so stay tuned for that and just so you guys know um, I have to hit here to um, open the live chat um, it doesn't just stay open um, which is really annoying so every now and then I will you know hit it and open to kind of see what your questions are what's going on um, this is a good time to um, ask me questions. It can be chicken related or, you know, gardening related, whatever you guys want. So periodically through the class, I'll just stop to kind of um, take a look and see, you know, if you guys have any questions. Um, so before we get into it, um, just so you know, uh, today we are located on my aunt's property. So I don't know if you, if you're, if you know, if you've been following me for some time, you probably do. Um, most of my videos and stuff are done at my home garden and I live in a little HOA community very urban um, There's lots of rules. I cannot have chickens there. I can't have bees. I also am a beekeeper and I have my bees here Because um, I, I just can't have that kind of stuff where I'm um, living so we are in St. Cloud outside of city limits and that's important because there's no rules here when it comes to how many chickens and whatever stuff I can do out here so I'm very lucky to have my aunt in my life that she lets me do all of this here because um, she likes the same things. So I am the way I am today because of her. She's heavily influenced my life and I love gardening because of her and all of that. So this is a great space for my entire family. We come out here, they help me with projects. We do things with the chickens like my grandpa and my uncles help me build this um, coop. Like at some point, everyone in my family and including my husband's family because there's carpenters electricians on that side has helped me with this at some point so i am extremely lucky to have these people in my life um to help me with these things so i say that because i don't know how many chickens i have i'm just, I'm just gonna be honest with you i started with 12 um over the two years that i've had chickens i just started um with chickens two years ago um we've bought more we've hatched our own like every every way you can think of to get chickens I've done I've bought them online I've gone to local hatcheries and bought them hatched my own everything right so um, yeah I've accumulated quite a few chickens it's really hard to count how many because they're constantly moving around so I if I had to estimate I would say I probably have six roosters and maybe 30 or to 40 um, egg laying hens. So care as long as you're taking good care of your animals and like, you know, the neighbors don't complain or something like that. And so I know that's not the situation for everybody. So we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, how do you figure this stuff out? And, you know, if you can't have 40 chickens, you know, scaling that down and you could have five or six or whatever that might be. So just out of curiosity here, um, can you guys let me know in the chat um, who has chickens already? Or, or maybe you don't have chickens. Like, let me know your status. Do you have chickens? Are you thinking about it? Or did you just get started? I just kind of want to gauge, um, you know, how much knowledge you guys or experience you guys already have about this, um, you know, so I can cater the information um, to my audience here. 
All right, somebody has chickens. Okay, very good. Um, is there a breed that would be for egg production? And uh, yes, there's definitely differences between the breeds. Um, while I wait for everyone else to put in here, if um, you already have chickens or if you're thinking about it, um, I'd like to, but I'm afraid of the raccoons. Um, the breeds, um, just real quick, I wasn't going to get too specific about breeds today, but I am definitely doing a YouTube video about it. That's part of the series. None yet. You live in a HOA. I'm sorry. I want to move out of mine. <laughs> I just don't know how to make that possible. So I want to get land, have all my animals with me, have my nursery open to the public, do live classes, do garden tour tours, you pick stuff. Um, I just don't know how to do that. Right? The climate here in Florida sucks for buying property or homes right now. I refuse to sell my home to go buy another one because if you didn't know, here in Florida, corporations and companies can buy homes and rent them out. Like SeaWorld actually has a whole division where they buy homes and they rent them out. So what that means is the prices are being jacked up and normal people like you and me cannot buy houses. It's um, very limited supply. So I refuse to sell my house because of that. And I have to figure out a different way to um, get a, another piece of land or property. So if anyone knows anything, any ideas, I've searched stuff, please let me know. Um, you're only allowed to have six chickens, no roosters. That's pretty common. That's I would say that's pretty um, the standard probably for the majority of you. Um, let me see. Um, none yet HOA, no chickens yet. I'm looking to get started. Um, the breed question. Um, just real quick so I can answer your question about the breeds um, like I said I wasn't gonna get too into detail about that in this class because this is like the basics but I'm definitely doing a whole YouTube video just about different chicken breeds I don't know how many breeds I have in here I want to say like I don't know maybe like eight to ten different kinds of breeds here um, when you're purchasing chickens or researching them you're gonna come across some that are better for egg production some that are better for meat and some that are kind of like in between. So there's definitely, um, with egg production varieties, um, for example, the most common uh, chicken used commercially is the white leghorn, and I have some of those because I, you know, egg production is important to me. They lay, um, I don't know what the, the exact number, maybe 300, like 20-ish eggs. Whoa, <laughs> two roosters, literally, you guys need to go they were fighting and they like hit me <laughs> sorry um anyways they um the white leghorn lays like i don't know like 320 um large white eggs every year that's a pretty high amount that's not one a day but like getting close to like one egg a day and then there's other variety or you know breeds that are like i don't know like 220 a year or something like that so it depends and there are differences in personality between them like the white leghorns yes they lay a lot of eggs for you but they're real skittish like out of all the breeds i have here they're really skittish they don't want to be touched they immediately they run fast to really fast you can't really catch them easily like the other ones um so if you're looking for like a friendlier breed i recommend um the easter eggers i have a lot of those and the olive acres, they tend to be real curious and they don't mind like getting kind of close to you. And I also have some French copper morans. So those, those tend to be the more friendlier ones, but regardless of friendliness, I feel no matter the breed, they don't really want to be picked up or pet by a human. Um, some of them are, will allow you to do it more than others, I guess, or tolerate it more than others. But in general, they, it's not like a dog or a cat like they're not going to come up to you and willingly like you know pick me up pet me they're not like that um some breeds are um kind of more mean than others not to humans per se but between each other like some are definitely more dominant like i have some black australorps they are mean like they fight with the others they take their food they block the egg laying box and don't let other chickens like hens get in there if they need to egg lay their egg real quick um they peck at them so i notice they are kind of mean to the other chickens in the flock but they're also really good mothers they tend to go broody every spring want to hatch their own eggs and stuff like that so 
there's differences between personalities, um, but if your focus is on egg production, might as well go with a, a white leghorn and get a lot of, you know, large size eggs. Um, so the breeze, yeah, you got egg laying, um, the meat. Uh, so if you want to raise, and I've raised meat chickens too, actually last year was the first time I did that. Um, let me check the comments really quick, guys. The easy maintenance for traveling purposes. Um, that's why I'm doing this. I want to show you guys <laughs> how I automate everything because I live like just under 30 minutes from here. I can only come here once a, a week, you know, normally. I am very busy. I only have time to come here once a week. And I don't want my aunt to have to worry about feeding them, letting them out of the coop every day, all that. So I have automated like everything, the water, the food, and the, um, the egg laying boxes, like everything. So that way I can come here once a week and they're fine. Um, the only thing is the eggs, when they, you know, they're laying their eggs, it's, it, <laughs> they are loud. It's good practice to collect the eggs every day because for example, in Florida, it gets really hot during the summer and the eggs kind of get a little funky if they're sitting, you know, in the heat for you know days on end. But I, you know, so my aunt will come out here and collect the eggs or someone else in my Man, they are so loud. I'm sorry, guys. Or my other aunts or family members will come visit and they'll take eggs, you know. So it, it works out. If they are left out for, you know, a day or two, it's, it's okay. It's not a big deal. The eggs aren't going to go bad like that. But um, anyways, so uh, if you want meat chickens, like the same kind of chickens you get at the grocery store, they're real thick, they have um, big breast meat, um, they're tender meat, um, there's a specific breed for that. It's called a Cornish hen or something like that, um, broiler, I think it's like Cornish broiler. So I got 15 of those last summer. Those things are beasts i don't know how to explain it they grow so fast they grow from baby chick to ready to eat in like eight weeks huge massive fat they eat a lot of food just so you're aware they poop everywhere um they are very sweet though very sweet um very probably the most friendliest i've ever had out of all the ones here they just come up to you and just kind of sit there <laughs> i don't know but um, we did butcher them ourselves, um, and you know I ate them. <laughs> I'm just I'm being honest with you guys. Um, that's why we raised them, right? That's why we got them. We wanted to try that out. But for us, it was a lot of work to butcher them and all of that, and um, they ate a lot of food. So I was very glad to finally, you know, be done with it and not have meat chickens anymore. But if you want the same kind of meat, like the ones you get in the grocery store, that is the breed you have to get, okay? You can eat your other chickens if you want. It's just the meat is going to be, like, not as fat or as big, um, not as tender, and it just has a little bit more of, like, a gaminess to it. And gaminess, I mean, it reminds me more of, like, dark meat. Um, dark meat. Not, not gamey, like, I don't know, when you hunt and you get, like, game birds and stuff like that. But it is different. So you have some breeds that are in between um, that are called dual purpose. That means they lay eggs and you could eat them, it's okay. But um, my preference is if you want eggs, get an egg chicken. If you want meat, get those Cornish broilers specifically. But yeah, that, that answers your question right there about um, the breeds real quick. Okay, so um, let's move on now. Um, so yeah, I don't have rules out here. I can have as many chickens as I want. I don't know how many I have. And if I could have more, I would. I absolutely love them. So why get chickens? Um, I started getting chickens. Well, I've always wanted them my whole life, but I thought, man, this is gonna be a lot of work. I'm gonna have to clean all the time, all that stuff. Um, and it's not like that at all. And again, I'm going to show you how I automate everything here, including cleaning, because I don't like cleaning. I want to be gardening. So um, my chicken coop, I probably clean this thing out like twice in a year. And it depends on the kind of flooring you have and, and that kind of thing, which I will get into. So it's not that much maintenance. I can do it twice a year. That's fine. Like once every six months, um, I will deal with it and clean it out. 
Um, but chickens, um, I was worried about rising food costs. Like, you know, uh, what was it? Last, last year, the egg prices went crazy. And it looks like right now egg prices are going back up again. I don't know the reason for it. Last year, the reason was because of like bird flu or something was killing a lot of chickens. And so that drove prices up. So that definitely was concerning, and I'm, I had chickens already by that point, so I was very happy But um, to have chickens. Um, but also going through COVID and everything, uh, I'm not one of those people that think like the end of the world is coming or our, our food chain is going to be disrupted or something like that. But when COVID happened, uh, that gave me a little jolt of like, if something were to happen, would I be okay? And at that time, it was, no, I would not be okay. And even now, um, I have to get things together a little bit better, and then I could say, yeah, I'll be okay. But because of that experience with COVID, I, you know, I feel much better and less worrying about those kinds of things when I, knowing I have chickens and I have a protein source, and they're very easy to have too. So that just makes me feel better. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, rising egg costs or food security as much. It helps me be more self-sufficient. My goal is to be more uh, as self-sufficient as possible. That's why I garden. That's why I grow my food. That's why I have the bees. That's why I have the chickens. So I learn all of these things. They all work together. They're all hobbies that are really complementary, and they, they help me with gardening a lot. Um, and it's just a good feeling to know that that I have all this stuff. So again, I'm not one of those people on the extreme side of it thinking that you know, the end is coming or things are going to get disrupted, but it's just a, it's a good feeling and it makes me sleep better at night knowing that I have these things. So, um, I also am concerned about the quality and nutrition content of food, you know, and the, the way that, um, chickens are raised commercially is rather horrific and, you know, the nutrition just isn't there. Like when I raise my own chickens here at home and they're eating, a wide variety of a diet they have access to forage and eat insects and bugs and all of that and when i crack open the eggs they're fresh you know it's a fresh egg when the whites part of it is very liquidy and clear that's a fresh egg um whenever i buy eggs at the grocery store the whites part typically looks just a little bit cloudy so you don't know how old those eggs are and when I crack open one of my eggs the yolk is more of like an orange color it's a deep orange color which means it has a lot more nutrients in it than like the grocery store ones so just you know for those reasons for health for the ethical reasons of I don't want to support you know commercial egg farming um, obviously not everyone raises their chickens unethically you know commercially wise or whatever but the majority of them do so I just don't want to support that kind of stuff and like I said they're the biggest garden helpers I've ever had and I say that because um, you know I had a mobile coop which so I have a stationary coop I'll show you in a sec and I have a mobile one right I built a mobile coop uh, last winter when all the egg prices were skyrocketing because people were saying that it's something wrong with the chicken feed. I don't I don't think it was that. Um, well, sorry, let me back up. Last year when all the egg prices were going up, or the year before that, um, people were starting to say that their chickens weren't laying eggs anymore um, because of the food or whatever. Tractor supply food was put out there. That's what I feed my chickens, tractor supply food. And I was like, let me test out the theory if it's because it's winter time and there's less sun hours because chickens are triggered to lay eggs depending on how much sunlight hours there are. In winter time, there's less daylight hours. In summertime, there's a lot of daylight hours. And so I made a mobile coop, put them all in there and put them out in like full sun during the winter time. They started producing eggs again, like consistently. So it's a sunlight issue in my opinion. Um, but through the process of making that mobile coop and having them like moving them around sections of this land i noticed how they just tore up you see how this is all sandy and like clean here they cleaned the whole thing out like this used to be solid grass and like crab grass or bermuda grass whatever on top of that right i'm in florida that's the kind of grass we have they ate everything down to the ground they kick up the soil making it fluffy tilling it for you they eat the pests, the insects, ticks, like weed seeds, like all of that stuff. 
in a matter of just a couple weeks. It cleaned out that patch so quickly that I was like, dang, that would be such a good area to plant stuff in like immediately. I didn't have to break my own back with a tiller or solarizing a spot for months or whatever. I didn't have to do anything. They cleared the whole section for me. So ever since that, um, periodically, if I want to start a new, you know, section of garden or patch or rotate things or whatever, I'll put them back in my mobile coop and I'll, you know, take them around, leave them there for a couple of weeks. And so that's what made me realize like, dang, you know, animals um, can really help you a lot with gardening. And that also circles back to like principles with permaculture and that kind of thing where you're working with the land and the animals and being smart about how you're utilizing all of those, I guess, things, resources that you have access to. So animals are resources for you if you think about it in that mindset. So, um, and it's healthy for them because they get to forage on fresh new grass, eat naturally, not all the, you know, tractor supply feed that I give them, stuff like that. So that is the best for them and it's the best for us. So, um, so yeah, that's why I decided um, to get chickens and why I recommend it. If you're, especially if you're a gardener and you can have chickens, you need to get some, okay? No, no reason why not. So let's start talking about the basics. And I have some notes here because I very easily get off um, track. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Let me check my chat real quick here. Um, $6 a dozen yesterday, yep. Um, yeah, prices are definitely going up. Um, their eggs are orange. Um, double yolk um, chickens. There are some breeds that lay, have a tendency to lay double yolks. And it's just a normal egg, like the rest of them, and they just have double yolks. Um, I have a couple of those. They're called Red Star Sex Linked. Uh, if you notice, some of the breeds have the term sex linked in there. It's because... They were bred in such a way that when the baby hick, the chicks um, hatch, they can tell which ones are female and male right away. Like they have a little dot on the head or something like that, that will tell you right away if that chick is a female or a male, which is great if you want just hens, right? You don't want to waste all this time raising up baby chicks to find out you have a whole bunch of male roosters in there. You want hens for egg laying. So those breeds are great. That kind of guarantees you for sure that you have female or you have male, you know, whatever you're looking for. So the red stars um, lay extra large eggs and they tend to have double yolks in there too. So I, I like them. Um, and they, again, double yolks doesn't mean anything bad or unhealthy and it doesn't taste any different than the rest of them. But all right, so let's get into the basics. The first thing you need to do is check your city or county rules. I had mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, if you don't know where to start, I would contact your like city department. Um, try to see if you could talk to someone in the zoning um, department specifically. Usually you give them your address and they'll tell you like um, what kind of zone you are. So like this, this is um, property is zoned as residential it's not zoned as farmland or anything like that it, it but it's low density re residential if you're in a high density residential you probably will have like some rules for sure like people who are within the city <clears throat> um it got disconnected a little bit i don't have the best um wi-fi connection out here guys sorry um question if you have a preference for Saturday lime or oh um lime or diatomaceous earth for the coop and run sorry if you've already I've not answered that um I don't use any of those products with my chicken um ex chickens except for the diatomaceous earth I will mix that with peat moss and some yeah some peat moss um and a little bit of soil because they like to bathe in it and it helps um they like I don't know how to explain it. They'll sit and like throw dirt on themselves and the diatomaceous earth will kill any like ticks, mites, that kind of thing that they have on them. It, it helps clean the chickens basically. So that's that's the only thing I, only time that I would use one of those products. But yeah, so check your um, city department. Um, most of the time they'll say something like, you can have six chickens, no roosters, right? And you need to get inspected, permits, licenses, um, those things might sound annoying, but they're, they're easy to get. Like, it's not, it's not that hard. 
you're not going to get in trouble. You know, they're going to come and just look at it. It's not that big of a deal. It might seem a little daunting and just like annoying to have someone from, you know, the city come to your property to take a look at things. But, you know, it's not hard to do. Um, another great resource, uh, if you're in Florida, I don't know if they do this in other states, but like in Florida, um, the University of Florida has what's called extension offices in every county. So you can contact your extension office and they are a wealth of resources and information, not just for chickens, but like beekeeping, they'll do classes. That's actually how I took my very first beekeeping class was with the Orange County Extension Office in Orlando, Florida. Um, they'll teach you about gardening. They'll come test out your soil if you need help with that. Like, so, so, such a great resource. Like, you really should stop by their office, check them out, get to know the people there a little bit um, when you're trying to, you know, do any of these types of activities. But the University of Florida does this, and they, they call it a, an extension office because it's a way to disperse information out to the public so that's like kind of a service that they do um i don't know if they do that in other states but in florida they can help you figure out if you're zoned um for chickens or not or whatever whatever it is as well um so yeah so pretty easy to to figure that out um i highly recommend you know the answer to that before you go buying everything only to find out maybe you can't have chickens or whatever okay and don't get in trouble guys <laughs> follow the rules you don't want to get fined or a neighbor complain and then you know they find out you have chickens when you weren't supposed to um just follow the rules okay um all right so if you are clear to have chickens now you need to figure out how you're going to house them and take care of them right so let's get into um the parts of what make up a chicken coop so i'm going to move the camera a little bit here um I've had all sorts of different setups by this point. I is um, my chickens were in some door, so this is um, set to a timer that would let the chickens out like at 6 a.m. and close like at you know 8:30 or whatever we want. Inside of here, on the sides, actually, my family helped me attach wheels to this that we like step on a, like a lever thing and it pops the wheels like down and lifts this whole thing up a little bit. There's so many ways you can attach wheels to things. Okay, this is just one idea for you so that we could drag this around and move it around. And this dog kennel thing is super lightweight too, okay? So anyways, I got that from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you are thinking about getting the same one. And this dog kennel thing is a great run for those of you that have a small chicken coop that could fit inside of there. So you could put your little chicken coop in there and put this on top, bang, you, you're set up. You have your run, you have your chicken coop. But I have my chickens in there. I have this tarp, it's broken now, I gotta replace it. But this is a reflective tarp just to keep them cooler and the sun off from them. And they would stay in there for a couple weeks as I rotated them you know, around the land. Um, I have a food dispenser on wheels. It's an old trash can that I converted into a food dispenser. I actually have a YouTube video showing you how I built that and an automatic watering um, dispenser thing too that keeps them fed and watered for weeks. So when I go on vacation, I know they're fine. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. So that was inside of there. Their egg laying box was inside of there. I got two by fours. This thing is, I think it's 10 feet wide. So I got 10 feet two by fours and just stuck them across. I didn't have to attach them, nail them, none of that. And they stayed there. So this is a great like temp. My house takes up half of that. I can't plant stuff in the front of it. So that's like another half I don't have. So my, my home garden is super small, but this is two and a half acres here in the country. No HOA, no rules, none of that. So um, yeah, so that was my mobile coop and it still works. I'm just not using it right now because we just built this huge enclosed coop area and they're pretty good in here right now um but i do plan on reusing this when i start planting up like my summer gardens and stuff like that all the way in the back here okay so um that is a mobile coop idea for you i had to end up building a stationary like solid coop for them which i'll show you guys here because um we get hurricanes here in Florida and that was no fun having to run around and catch a whole bunch of chickens to put in a dog kennel. Let me adjust the um, camera here real quick.
to put them all in a dog kennel and on our like porch, our covered porch, so that they would be safe while a hurricane, you know, moves through the area. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to throw some treats over there so that they go over there <laughs> and are a little bit more quiet. But yeah, um, you know, the mobile coop thing, I really loved it. Um, it's just, you know, hurricanes and stuff. They needed something solid. This whole thing is made out of plywood. Um, again, I am, I am not, I'm throwing cranberries to them, dried cranberries. They go crazy over this stuff. Um, I am not like a professional carpenter or anything like that. Like my, my grandpa, like helped put this together and stuff, but it works and it's solid. And I don't have to worry now about, you know, if a hurricane's coming, what am I going to do with all these chickens? Um, so this is, I know it's kind of hard to see it, but it does extend further that way. Um, so this is the coop. Um, let's talk about coop basics. So, um, one second. Your chicken home is made out of two things. You got the coop. That's the home. This is where they go into at night. This protects them from the elements. Um, and it protects them from predators while they go to sleep at night. So they naturally, chickens naturally, um, when it starts getting like dusk or evening, they know like bedtime is coming and they need protection. So they'll start like if, let's say, let's say I didn't have a coop or nothing, you know, chickens in the wild, they start going up in trees to sleep there for the night so that they are not easily accessible by, you know, predators and things like that. So they naturally will go inside this coop. Like we don't have to herd them in there or none of that kind of stuff. They naturally just start going in there. Um, they're roosting bars where they sit on at night are on this side. So they're just they're all in there already by, by nighttime. Um, so that's what the coop is for. The coop has to be predator proof. Cause again, this is where they're sleeping at night. This, this thing has to be solid. Like you don't want critters getting in there, snakes, hawks, nothing. And I'll talk a little bit about predator proofing as well in a bit. So this, this is the main thing. This is the most important thing. Um, you can make a coop out of so many different things, guys. You don't have to spend a bunch of money and get solid plywood and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can reuse things like th there's a million ways to make a coop. I don't want you to get hung up on this is what you need more. Just think about like the basic requirements, right? They need to be protected from weather. They need a shelter. Um, they need uh, to be safe from predators. That's basically the, the main two things about whatever coop you're going to use. Um, so with um, the coop, just to give you an idea how big of a coop you might need, a, a good rule of thumb <laughs> is for every chicken, you need four square foot of space inside of the coop, all right? So if you have like six chickens, that's like 24 square foot. They don't need a lot of space in here. This is literally where they go to sleep at night. What they need more space of is the run, like the area outside of the coop where they hang out during the day. So um, inside of your coop, it's pretty standard to put the egg laying box in there too because it's safe, protected, all that good stuff. So um, that's just a good, smart, you know, spot to put it. And actually you could see the, my box uh, right there. It's sticking out right there. I'll, I'll go in there in a bit and show you guys. But that's basically all that goes in a coop. You got their roosting bars where they hop on and sleep on at night and the egg laying box. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of a coop. And then you have the run. The run is the outside area where they come out of every day. They can forage. Um, that definitely, the bigger the run you can give them, the better. Um, just a rule of thumb, thumb with the runs. Um, you need at least three, oh, sorry. Um, hold on. Where's my run information? General people in general people say your run should be like twice as big as your coop. Um, I would say so, you know, if your coop is four square foot of chicken, you need one that's at least eight square foot of chicken. But the more you can give them, the better for the health of your chickens. If they're too crammed in there, they'll start fighting with each other. That causes a lot of stress. They'll peck feathers out of each other's backs. Stuff like that. Um in general people will say to only have one rooster because they'll fight with each other and that's true like they will fight with each other 
Um, but I have six roosters. They get along. They don't really fight much with each other. But it's because I have enough females per rooster as well. Like a, a good rule of thumb for that is to have ten hens per um, rooster so that they don't like fight too much with each other. And I have decided not to get rid of my roosters because up until now they're getting along okay. I don't notice that they're like disrupting my flock or causing chaos or whatever. Um, so I keep them because they also protect the flock, right? They'll fight predators and stuff like that. So I'm going to keep my roosters. Um, but yeah, the run, um, that's this outside area. I have this netting here I put over it to protect my chickens from the hawks and stuff like that during the day. Again, this is my aunt's property. She works. She works at Disney. She's not here during the daytime at all. There's no one here to watch over the chickens. So I have opted to put this netting here so I don't have to worry about, you know, things getting my chickens while no one's here to help them out, you know. So this is this is optional. If you're home and you're vigilant and you can be with them, then I, I probably wouldn't have this. But because of my situation and no one's really here, I got this netting for them. So I have not had a predator problem at all. In my two years of having chickens, I've not lost one to a single predator because I immediately had everything like set up properly. The only time I had an issue was when I had baby chicks. A snake got in and and they got one of the chicks. Um, but we'll talk about that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, you got your coop and then you have the outside area, which is the run. So let's um, go into the coop now. Let me check my comments really quick. You have 33 chickens and three roosters. Yep, I don't know how many chickens I have, but they're fine. Um, yeah, actually right now they're making the egg laying sound. That's a very specific sound that they make when they're like getting ready to, to lay an egg. Is that a quail? No, I have a Guinea, Guinea. I don't know how you say it in English. <laughs> Um, my family's from the Dominican Republic. We call them Guinea. I think they're called Guinea, Guinea fowl in English. But um, I had four of them when I started because they are really good at protecting the flock from predators. They make a really loud, annoying noise that alerts everyone of any predators in the area. So that's why I decided to get four of them originally when I got my chickens. And they, they were raised together and they get along. They live in the, the coop together and everything. Um, they also eat a lot of ticks and stuff like that, so that helps keep the chickens clean as well. However, their noise is really annoying. I had four of them, and it was like non-stop honking. It's ridiculous. It would give me a headache if I'm like out in the garden and stuff. It is a little annoying. And I only have one now because they're crazy. They're wild. Um, they they would fly up in trees, escape, fly up in a tree, and then jump down and break their neck. Like, seriously, they would just, they're, they're wild. Um, if I had more land, I probably would get some more because I do believe they help with, you know, maintaining the flock and keeping them safe. But if you're going to get one, just really think about it because <laughs> they're, they're a little crazy. Um... Can I just have chickens with no rooster? Very good question. You do not need a rooster. Those chickens, those hens, will lay eggs regardless. They have to. They, their body is making eggs. They, they have to. Um, so if you have a rooster though, now you have fertilized eggs. Okay, so that means if you wanna hatch your own baby chicks, you just take some of your eggs, put them in an incubator, they're fertilized eggs, you'll get baby chicks out of it. If you don't have a rooster, your eggs aren't going to be fertilized. They're not going to hatch baby chicks. That's the only difference there is. Um, but yeah, you do not need a rooster to have eggs. Your hens naturally will be producing eggs. They have to. Um, okay, so there's lots of other ways for you to have chickens. You don't even need uh, an actual coop, run, whatever. Um, chickens naturally, or like I've heard like the Amish people, they don't do all this. They just have their chickens out in the wild, you know, living in the trees, foraging their own food every day. I personally, if I had the land, I would do that. Like I would just have them out, you know, whatever. I'd have a ton of chickens, fend for yourself, survival of the fittest, 
that's the natural way they'll feed themselves i don't have to buy food for them anymore that kind of thing um so you know if i had the space that's what i would do but the neighbor's yard is literally right behind here um and we have another neighbor over there and just because no one's home to watch them all the time i can't just have them out and about and plus I know I said they're the garden's like best friend if you know how to utilize them properly, but they will tear up your garden. So <laughs> I have to enclose my gardens here so that they don't mess and tear it up. But that was before. Now they're they're enclosed in here. They're not getting out into my gardens. But if you're gonna have your chickens wild, they will eat up and destroy your garden. Um, before I would just take like the 10 or seven foot T post and put them around the perimeter of my little garden area bed. And then I would take, um, chicken coop wire and wrap that around it and secure it with some, um, zip ties. Right. So that would, they would, it would be pretty tall like this, this tall, whatever. I don't know. What is that? Six foot or so because chickens can fly. They're not like the best flyers, but they can fly and they can get out. I I've noticed like if the wall isn't or whatever fence isn't taller than six feet, they'll, they'll jump out of it. So, um, yeah, that's one thing to consider if you're going to have them just roaming around and you have a garden, they'll mess it up for sure. So yeah, if it, ideally I wish I had land and I would just have them out. I wouldn't spend money on food, nothing, or like feed for them or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I have a neighbor who keeps a chicken in a small box frame with chicken wire around it and they move the box across the lawn every day so that is another example of a uh, mobile coop and that is a great idea you can have a mobile coop that's maybe just a couple feet tall lightweight people make them out of pvc um you know material so it's lightweight and you can just pull it you don't need a tractor to pull it none of that kind of stuff so again there's a million ways for you guys to do this kind of stuff okay um, I'm just going through the basics of like whatever option you go with. This is what it needs to have at least. Okay, so um, we talked about the coop. Um, let's go inside of the coop. Let me show you guys how big this is. I think my coop is like 22 feet long by 8 feet wide, something like that. Um, and so yeah, that's the coop. Uh, let me show you guys. Oh, I got to go inside to show you guys that. But here's a, a window and there's like a panel it's pulled up this is a panel here of wood that drops down with a string and i'll show you inside of here so i can close all of these windows and well this is the door but those windows too if a hurricane is coming or you know cold weather or whatever it might be we could easily just let the string down and close all the windows um here in florida it's very hot and humid so ventilation is very important um, and someone asked about flies they don't attract flies if you have everything nice and clean and you know ventilated like this is wind is able to flow in here there's another window on the side here so there's a lot of you know wind movement um, things are nice and dry in there so the flies have not been a problem for us this run area is out open let me show you guys some run a little bit it keeps going over there then the coop here and then the run kind of ends there that's that's another chicken coop that right there now it's just storage but that's um one of the first ones i had it was an old greenhouse made out of hoops of pvc no one was using it so i covered the whole thing with wire put a tarp over it and that was one of their chicken coops for a long time um until um until hurricane season came and i was like all right i gotta figure something else out um so yeah um that is the area here so let's um go inside the coop finally it's pretty um what's the aerial netting that i use i got this from amazon um i don't know the exact name of it but this is like a thick plastic vinyl and it has not ripped or torn for me or anything like that um it is bird netting i will put in the description after this class this video will upload onto my youtube channel on the live section i'll put in the description a link to this because so far this this is the only one i have found like this and i don't i don't know how long this is or big it is a huge piece i i want to say it's 100 feet long by like i don't know 25 or 50 feet wide it's a huge huge piece 
I think I spent like a hundred bucks on it or something like that. So for the protection it offers my coop, I mean, and its durability, this has been here for, we built this area last summer. Um, it, it's awesome. This is a really good one. Um, okay, so let's go inside of the coop finally. Oh, real quick about um, water. <clears throat> Let me show you guys. This is a, a water dispenser. I don't know how good you'll hear me once I back away from <laughs> Sorry, guys. It keeps disconnecting because I'm not, like, close to the house where the Wi-Fi is. So bear with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, this is a water dispenser. It's an old trash can that we installed these little, like, watering cups at the bottom of it. Um, I will put a link to where you can get those watering cups. It's super easy to put this together. Like, in less than five minutes, I was able to do this by myself. And this holds a lot of water, keeps clean for, I don't know how long, weeks, right? So they, I used to have two of them, but the other one just broke, so I got to build another one. You want to make sure your chickens have access to clean, fresh water, like, at all times, at all times. Um, especially in Florida when it gets hot here during the summer, I notice that they're, like, panting a lot. They're, they're hot, so make sure they have access to fresh water. If I knew how to do plumbing and stuff like that, I would have done like a like float system to where if the float, if the water level goes down a certain point, it would, the floaty thing would drop down and that would open the valve for like water from the hose or spigot to like fill it up automatically. That's what I would do, but I don't know how to do all that kind of stuff. So I try to go with like basic stuff. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I'm just going to say, you know, I'm a female. I don't know how to build things like that or really use tools. So when I figure things out, like simple things like making something like this, I try to do like videos and show other like women how to do this. Um, I'm just being honest. Like the easiest way to get it done that anyone can do it, even if you don't know how to use tools. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So, yeah, that's. That's how I feed or water my chickens is using a dispenser like that. So let's go inside um, this door. There's a cutout right door. Um, okay, so let's out here. They're eight foot long, just put across. Um, we built like, and it's gross in here. I'm going to say, all right, this is clean for, for the coop. Um, chickens will poop on everything and destroy, <laughs> just, just dirty everything. Okay. That's the realities of having chickens. Um, I thought, oh, I'm going to make it look so pretty and like paint the inside and make it all cute. I'm like, what, what's the point? They're going <laughs> to, they're going to poop on everything. So I'm glad I didn't waste my time doing that. But over here, I have all my roosting bars. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them here. They're eight feet long. They're not attached to the actual coop. So we built um, these two by fours sticking out here so that I could just, if thing is moving, my stand is because a chicken hit it. Okay, so sorry. But there's a two by four here that acts like a ledge where I just slide um, the, these two by fours on there, right? So they don't fall down, none of that. And that is super handy because these roosting bars will get real gross. They, you gotta clean them every now and then. So I just pop them off and like scrape off all the poop or whatever, wash them, that kind of thing, and then put them back. It's gross, but it has to be done. And that's the realities of having chickens, right? Um, I put a ladder here so they can easily, you know, get up and down. But um, I don't really think it's necessary because they still just fly up, up there by themselves anyways. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Um, these are the two flaps here for the windows that we made. Let me see if I could show you guys that a little bit better. Um, as you can see, there's a string here. Um, it goes through another, like a metal loop up here. And then we tie it to the sides here. So let me release one and show you guys what that looks like. This is just the easiest way we found to make a like really heavy duty window with a um you know wooden enclosure to help you know like if a hurricane comes or something 
one second more well, and tie it and again you just tie it to the same two by fours on the wall here all right let's see so it closes and it opens very easy um right now it's not very cold in florida it's just starting to get hot so I leave these open now at this point. I think our nights are getting to be like, sometimes in the 40s, sometimes, but that's fine. Because chickens, um, when they go to sleep at night and lay on their roosting bars, they, uh, they generate heat. So they, they tend to keep each other warm. Um, so for the size of flock that I have and when they're all sitting there, they're fine with temperatures in the 40s. Obviously, if you're living in a cold environment, that's something you're gonna have to think about and make that decision for yourself if you need to add some kind of heating for them during your winter. I am not an expert with cold weather at all. I've never lived in snow, none of that kind of thing. Um, the only thing I will tell you is when you're thinking about adding heat, if you need to, because some people say you don't need to, even in like freezing temperatures, um, chickens, they've survived you know, the history of human existence at least, whatever, and they've never had heating. Some people say they'll be fine, but if you think your flock needs some extra heat, please do not put like an electric heater that's meant for humans or a room in here or like heat lamps and stuff like that. I can't tell you how many times I've read stories online or whatever where something came in contact with that heating element and burned down the whole coop or even burned down people's houses because the coop was close to the house or whatever with it so don't do that get like official heating things made for chicken coops okay that's number one thing i'm gonna tell you if you live in a cold climate don't use you know a heater a space heater or something like that oh you have to get cold weather chickens yes that's another thing to consider when you're selecting your breeds um there are some that do better in colder weather than others here in Florida, um, there's also the opposite too. There's some breeds that do better in warmer, hotter climates than others. Um, because I don't have to worry about the cold. I just buy whatever chicken breeds I want. Um, I don't. I don't really focus on them being, you know, who's better at heat or handling the heat than others. I kind of think they all pretty much manage it the same. The only thing I would say that I've noticed is the darker color chickens. Like I have the black Australorps. I have the french um copper morans they're black right and i think i feel like when i'm looking at them they sh they definitely get hotter than the other chickens and i just notice them panting a little bit more than the other chickens so i think that's just due to their feather color though but um yeah that definitely is something to consider um the water feeder that i sh uh dispenser that i showed you guys we keep that on the outside of our coop because sometimes it'll drip or whatever the chickens get water around and it would you know wet the interior of our coop and make it you know you want the interior of the coop to stay dry dry as possible so for that reason we moved it outside um but um i have the automatic feed dispenser inside of here to help protect it from you know rodents and stuff like that um <laughs> sorry guys i'm trying to adjust all of this but um so this is same deal um wow uh, because of the way the lighting is you probably aren't going to see me very well but um it's an old trash can that i attach these like feeder cups to um the good thing about it is that um it's you know it's huge so if i buy a bag of feed um this also acts as the storage for it and keeps the feed nice and dry because before we were putting our bags of feed in like a one of our um, sheds outside and like rodents were getting into it and all that kind of stuff so by having the inside of here it stays dry i can use it as storage and the rodents don't want to come in here okay because the chickens will eat them like i um in my other coops i i'm gonna just be honest you know when winter comes around the rodents they're looking for a nice warm place to be for the winter and they would start coming into the coop and everything. <clears throat> I've seen my chickens attack them, eat them, even like rats sometimes, or like baby rats, if they made a little nest, the chickens would dig the nest out and eat them. 
I know that sounds really gross, but I'm, it's the realities of it. Since I've had this coop though here, um, and like solid, like predator proofed it and that kind of thing, I don't have a rodent problem anymore. And another thing with the rodents, if they do get inside of here, they like, they know the chickens are going to eat them or attack them. So if there's like something, you know, on the ground, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like I used to have my chicken egg laying box, this one, I used to have that just straight on the ground. The rodents would come in and they would dig a nest under this, right? Under that. And the chickens can't get to them now because they are underneath of this thing and they're protected. So they had a little nest in there. One time I moved this to like clean it out and some baby um, mice or rats, I'm not sure what, came out and the chickens immediately went and <laughs> attacked them and ate them. So um, don't have things sitting on the ground. That's what I'm trying to get to because the rodents could come in and make a little nest under that. Now I have this lifted up on some cement blocks. So chickens can get under here. I don't have a rodent problem anymore since I started doing that. And since I've had this coop in particular, cause it's, it's predator proof, rodent proof, all that. There's, yeah, it's not a problem anymore. So, um, yeah. So don't try to have things on the floor. And then as, now that we're talking about the floor, this is mulch. Um, flooring, you're, you're going to have to decide what kind of flooring you're going to use. Um, if, if you have like a mobile coop or something like that, I'm trying to get the lighting a little bit better. <laughs> I guess this is better. Um, if you have a mobile coop or something like that, um, flooring is not an issue, right? Cause I mean, you're just moving your chickens around to fresh grass. It's dry. And then you move them to a new spot. Inside of a coop though, you want a flooring material that's going to be very absorbent and keep everything as dry as possible because as the chickens, you know, poop all over the place, that stuff, um, you know, it makes the area like wet and that kind of thing that causes like pathogens that make them sick to start spreading and growing and that kind of thing. I luckily in the two years I've been doing this, I've not had a chicken die from a disease or any kind of a disease outbreak or something like that because I've always just maintained you know a dry coop. Um, in Florida our natural sand outside or soil outside is sand and if I could choose any just one material to use on the bottom of the coop it would be sand. Sand is dry, very absorbent and it's practically sterile like it's pretty hard for things to grow in it and that kind of thing. So I would, if I had my choice, I would do like coarse sand, not play sand, whatever, that kind of sand. It has to be coarse sand because play sand is fine enough to where the chickens can breathe it in and it can cause health issues with them. I was not able to find coarse sand in my area. I called around, no one had it. So I had to go with the second option, which was this mulch. This is regular pine, um, not pine, sorry. Um, cypress mulch, it's not dyed, no chemicals, none of that kind of thing. Um, so I put a good, I want to say like five inches or so of that mulch here. And that keeps everything really good and dry. I don't have to be cleaning this all the time. Um, over, I, it, you know, it depends, but this is going to last at least six months, maybe even more. Um, it just keeps everything nice and dry. And as time goes by, this is going to compost down. You can scoop all this stuff out and use it to like fertilize your garden with it. So really good stuff. Um, some people like to use uh, pine, fine, like pine shavings. Let me check the comments real quick. Um, what about medium construction sand, the brand Quick Cre I don't know the brands. Like, what does that look like? If it's considered coarse sand or not. Um, I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked at it myself. I was just calling around um, companies that like deliver mulch and dirt and that kind of thing in bulk. Um, and no one seemed to have like coarse sand specifically. So just call around and see what they recommend. Otherwise, um, you know, get some mulch. If you can do chip drop, thank you for reminding me about that. Um, chip drop, I've used chip drop a lot for my garden just to get free deliveries of wood chips. And for whatever reason, you know, I, I live in a pretty residential area of Orlando. And if I put a chip drop request, I'll get it. I'll get a bite. Like, you know, in a couple days, last time it took me five months, 
but usually literally two days i got a delivery of free wood chips i love wood chips i use it all over my garden I would be using wood chips here if it wasn't for the fact that I put in a request with chip drop. It's been two years now and I have not got a bite. Nothing, nothing. So I don't know what that's about, but I just, I just can't get wood chips here. But if you can, that is a great resource to use for the bottom of your chicken coop. Um, so the next best thing for me, I couldn't get sand, I couldn't get wood chips, is just mulch, right? Um, so yeah, we put this mulch here. I only need to clean this out like once every six months or so something like that so not a tremendous amount of work realistically um why not cedar um i mean you could use cedar mulch if you want i don't think there's a a, a problem um with using cedar as a mulch i just went with the cheapest all natural like no dyes or nothing mulch that i could find and for me it was cypress mulch so that's what i use um yeah so oh okay put yourself on your local arborist list trust me i have asked around um i have i, I don't know what it is but it's it's not happening here in st cloud for me anyways um it could potentially be because i'm, I'm literally five minutes away from the company that i bought this bulk mulch from and i wonder if they like all the arborists in this area, just go to them and give them their mulch and stuff like that. I don't know. That's my theory with it. But yeah, so sand, wood chips, mulch. The most common thing though that I probably see people use are the fine pine shavings that you get like at Tractor Supply. They're sold in like a big like bale. Um, those things definitely keep things dry, but they break down really fast. Really fast, especially if you're in Florida and it's already humid and wet to begin with. And if you have a coop of this size, that's quite a few like bales of pine shavings you're gonna have to buy all the time. And that stuff breaks down really fast. So you're gonna have to clean more frequently than if you used a different material as well. Um, if I had a smaller coop, the pine shavings would be great. It's not a big deal. It's not a lot to clean out. It's, that's, she's about to lay an egg or go in there and lay an egg. <laughs> but anyways, um, if I had a smaller coop, pine shavings would be a great option. It's easy to go to the store and buy a couple bales and refresh um, your chicken coops. Some people use like an extra thick um, bedding type of method where they'll put like, I don't know, one foot thick of whatever bedding material you're using. Then they'll scrape all of that stuff out and replenish it. There's a million things you can use, guys. But I find the mulch, the sand, or the wood chips is the cheapest and like the less amount of cleaning if that makes sense deep litter deep litter was the term i was going for yeah how do you protect them at night from predators we're about to get into that um, um i was talking about flooring ventilation at the top where the roof meets the sides of the walls whatever you want to call that um there's a little bit of a space too so that air can exit because here in florida the heat you know heat gets trapped above cold so the heat naturally goes upwards and then it can escape out of the like vents and stuff that we have at the top here so predator proofing um the number one thing i'm going to say about predator proofing is do not use chicken coop wire to predator proof chicken coop wire has holes that are like that big or so um and it's pretty flimsy stuff that is only used to keep chickens in. Like if you need to control your chickens, keep them enclosed in something, use chicken coop wire. But all predators, they can break that stuff, they can get in, um, snakes can get in. Um, that's not predator proofing. Uh, instead, you need to use hardware cloth. And I didn't even know what this stuff was until I got chickens. But hardware cloth, and I'll show you what that looks like on the windows here. <laughs> um this is oops sorry about that this is hardware cloth and you can buy it in lots of different dimensions this is quarter inch so that means each square is like a quarter inch they also sell it in half inch and i believe an inch as well i went with quarter inch because i have a lot of snakes here in florida and trust me if you have chickens those snakes will come so this predator proofs against the chick uh the snakes as well 
Um, so yeah, cover all your windows with this stuff. Um, I obviously I have actual walls here, but if you have a mobile coop where you you know took a dog kennel like my one down there and covered it, you're gonna want to cover it in this stuff. All right, and this is usually sold in rolls of like three foot wide, four foot wide, stuff like that. So just you know, this predator proofs. All right, my windows are covered in this. Um, you also need to let me see if I can show you guys this on the outside of your coop here. Um, I don't know how if you can see how fine that is right there, that gray. That is more hardware cloth. You want to attach it to the bottom of your coop and have it extend outwards like at least a foot, at least 12 inches. Mine is extended like two feet because raccoons, whatever, those critters, whatever, they'll dig under the ground and come up underneath inside of your coop. So that completely blocks that. That also completely blocks rodents because they would do the same thing. They would dig and come on through the other side. So that's why I say I don't have a rodent problem anymore because they're they're not getting in there anymore. So that is the essentials. Cover all the openings and the outsides that are opened and not wall walled with um, the hardware cloth and extending one foot out away from the floor of your structure as well. Obviously, when you have a mobile coop, like, you know, that dog kennel over there that I converted into a mobile coop, um, you cannot, I mean, I'm sure maybe there's a way you could figure this out. I didn't do this, but um, attaching, you know, a piece to the bottom and making it extend out is kind of impossible because you're moving that coop around type of thing. So I didn't, and I was lucky I didn't have a problem with, you know, uh, any kind of critters and stuff digging and coming on through. If that were to happen, I'd have to figure something out. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's how you predator proof. Do not use chicken coop wire. Um, this run, by the way, again, I'm not a, uh, you know, I don't know how to build things. So I try to use materials to my abilities, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I don't know if you can see all of these T-posts that run all the way around. Um, I don't know the size of this run. We just built it, right? These are T-posts. At the top of the T-post, we just used like whatever materials we had laying around. Some of them have like PVC pipes to extend to make the T-post taller. Metal pieces, like whatever. Whatever stuff we can find. Just to get a high T-post um, post height to attach water bottles at the top of it. Let me see if I can show you. I can't see because of the sun, but I think you guys can see. Here's a water bottle that we just put at the top so that it will hold this netting, right? And I also have chicken coop wire running here, probably like the first, I don't know, almost four feet um, to keep the chickens in because <laughs> that's what the run is for, to keep chickens in. Um, so I'm not using hardware cloth on the run area. That's just um, chicken coop wire. So predators could come in through my run area they could you know cut a hole dig under come in through my run area but i can't get in here the chickens are protected in here and i i haven't had a predator issue yet they say that you know once a predator comes in and has a successful kill they will remember that and they will keep coming so i highly recommend from day one you try make it predator proof as possible as much as possible so you don't have them coming to the area i i mean i don't live here but my aunt does tell me they have seen raccoons recently like going in their trash cans and stuff like that so i i know we have predators in this area but i haven't had any of them get inside of the coop okay and raccoons are pretty smart they can open little latches and stuff like that so make sure whatever handle latches you use on your doors are pretty you know strong and tight but yeah, so we talked about the coop, the flooring, um, um, the hardware cloth, buried or just, um, we did not bury our hardware cloth. Uh, it is just covered over the top surface of the soil. Um, over time, the chickens and stuff are kicking soil up on top of it. But I, I don't find a need to bury it. And like, why do more work if it's not necessary is my um, thoughts with it. And it's fine. 
All right, let's see if there's any other questions in there. We have chickens for meat. I did talk about that a little bit earlier. I did have meat chickens last summer. I had 15 Cornish broilers, I think it's what they're called. They ate a lot of food. Um, they grew very quickly, and we just decided it was too much work to clean them and that kind of thing. Um, so I was pretty happy when we were done with, <laughs> done with it. I don't think I will ever get them again. Um, technically, a lot of these chickens that I have, these hens, are considered dual purpose. You can eat them, um, and they lay eggs for you, but their meat is not going to be the same like grocery store meat. And I, I have to admit, I'm conditioned to grocery store meat. Um, so when we, I obviously, I've tried them. <laughs> I've tried them, but they have, uh, it's not as tender meat, and it, it just tastes more like dark meat. And I like dark meat, but... It just had even more of a dark meat flavor. I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't bad. It's just I'm not conditioned to it. It's not how I grew up, um, which I feel bad saying that now. Like this is the natural way, right? These are natural chickens. I, I don't. I mean, they're not. You know, have chemicals or hormones on them, um, and it's it sucks to say that I've been conditioned to eat a product that is not natural, right? So <laughs> I feel bad now. I'm like, oh dang. Never thought of it that way, but um, do they taste bad? No, but is it like you know grocery store when you buy a you know a whole chicken and you roast it up? No, <laughs> uh, but the Cornish uh, broiler hens um, are okay. So um, back to the chicken coop because um, I think I, I I don't think I mentioned about the roosting bars. So the roosting bars is what the chickens jump up on at night to sleep on, right? They need something to, they want to be high up off the ground. So these roosting bars, I highly recommend that you place your first There's one right there. Um, if a predator gets in here, um, they're safe or at least safer, right? They're at least four feet off the ground. Um, I tried, man, they are loud. They are so loud. <laughs> I tried to have all my roosting bars at the same level because chickens, um, they, some are more dominant than others. They'll fight with each other. The more dominant ones will go up top and they'll fight and make the other ones stay on the lower bars. So I tried to have all of my roosting bars at the same level so they can't fight, right? There's not any levels to be fighting over. So, but I, I needed to add a couple more roosting bars. They needed some more. So I had, I had no more space and I had to just make a second level in here. So, but, you know, have plenty of roosting bar space for them because if they don't have enough space, they'll fight with each other. Um, or some of the hens or chickens will end up, you know, sleeping on the floor and you don't want that. So anyways, those are the roosting bars. There's lots of different materials you can use for roosting bars. Um, I've used natural tree branches before, stuff like that. But I find that the um, these are two by fours are the best because in general it's healthier for chickens to not have their claws like this, you know, at night or whatever, and have that bend over like a branch or something like that. They really like to feel stable and flat, like have their feet flat. So I find like these two by fours, they can have their feet nice and flat, they're stable, and they're, they're real comfy up there. So that's why I particularly like to use the two by fours. All right, so um, we talked about water, we talked about um, the food. If you're free ranging, then you don't need food for them, right? They can free range. I'm gonna go back outside. It's uh, not so loud and echoey. <clears throat> um, if you're free ranging your chickens, um, like completely free ranging your chickens, then you don't really need to buy food for them. I wish I could do that. I really do. They will forage, eat insects, eat you know plant material, grass, whatever, right? And that's healthy for them. That's the most ideal. However, mine are enclosed. I can't be here every day to watch over them and that kind of thing. So they're enclosed. Therefore, I have to supplement their feeding with something. So I do buy bags of 
just the cheapest chicken feed I can find at Tractor Supply. Um, I think one bag, it's 40 pounds, and it's like $13 and some change. Um, with a coop or a flock this um, of this size, I probably buy five to six bags of that every month. So that's like 78, 80-ish dollars a month to feed my chickens. Um, for me, it's worth it because I absolutely love my chickens. They're the best pet I ever had. I love the eggs. Uh, they make a lot of eggs. Okay, for this size of a flock that I have, I haven't harvested the eggs yet today. I was going to open the, the egg box and do it with you guys. Um, right now, it's um, it's the end of February. It's still winter time. They have started picked, uh, picked back up egg laying again because the daylight hours are starting to get a little bit longer now. Um, I'm harvesting every day 30 to 40 eggs or so. That's a lot of eggs. That's definitely way more than like what a standard household would need. Um, but I, I do this because I share these eggs with my aunt's household, my household, my extended family, my grandparents, my husband's side of the family, like everyone, <laughs> everyone gets eggs from us basically. And I enjoy doing that. It's fun for us. My family, all the kids come out here, we're all involved in this. So for me to spend $78, $80 to feed my chickens is is fine. I'm completely happy with that. Um, you can cut down on feed costs if you're able to let your chickens forage maybe half the time or something like that. Um, you can grow things for your chickens to eat. I actually have a um a seed collection on my website just for chickens it's called a chicken garden seed collection with some of the things that are pretty easy to grow and produce you know a lot of food to give to your chickens um stuff like that includes like moringa sunflowers um i particularly like the florida broadleaf mustard greens because those things get huge like bigger than me leaves huge so that's a lot of like biomass and material for them moringa has like every single nutrient protein iron everything like that i'm trying to plant more moringa trees as much as possible here on this property so we can you know supplement their feed and give them that on top of you know me sharing eggs with my family they also share their kitchen scraps with us too so every now and then you know if my aunts or my grandparents are coming to visit they'll bring us chicken scraps or whatever or sometimes we'll visit them and take some back so everyone's like contributing to all of this um they will eat anything like there's only a couple things that chickens can't eat i think it's like avocado seeds um oranges for the peels something something about orange peels um, but besides that, they pretty much eat everything. Um, I do want to have much more stuff here growing to supplement their feed with. Um, it's going to take a while though to build that kind of thing up here. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many ways that you could feed your chickens. Um, some people, and I, I would do this, um, if I was here every day, will, you know, gather up, mix some food for them in the morning and only feed them one time in the morning. The rest of the day, you got to figure it out. You got to forage around, find your own food. That's what I would do because, um, you know, that that's healthy. They have more variety in their diet and they're not just gorging on food unnecessarily. I have this automatic feeder that is open food to them 24 hours a day. I have to have that though, because again, I don't want my aunt to have to feed them every day and I can't be here every day. So that's the trade-off. They have access to food. Do, they certainly, for sure, are eating way more than what they need because that food is just there. But yeah, ideally, if I was here every day or with my chickens every day, I would just feed them one big thing in the morning and that's it. That's all they need. So, you know, feed and costs and stuff like that are going to vary drastically depending on a lot of factors. Um, when I started out and I had just 12 chickens, that was the first, you know, set of chickens I bought. It was 12. I was buying like three bags of feed a month. So not, not a lot. So obviously I'm buying a lot because I have <laughs> a lot of chickens. Okay. I don't want to scare people with like feed costs and stuff like that. Um, people say, you know, you get chickens, but are the eggs actually cheaper? They're not free. If you're, if you're buying feed costs, they're not free. But the quality, the return I get, the enjoyment, sharing with my family, 
I, I'm happy with that. At some point, we want to start selling the eggs, but I have to get, like, all registered to, like, officially do that. Um, and then that, because we, we definitely produce way more eggs than what we possibly need or what I could possibly just give out to people sometimes. Um, summertime, when they're, like, at peak production, because that's, you know, daylight hours are at its longest, we're getting, like, 50 eggs a day. Like, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous amount. So... We would like to sell our eggs to make up for the feed costs at some point um, when when we eventually get to that. So I think the last thing that I haven't talked about was um, the egg laying boxes, pretty much. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, I've talked about everything except the egg laying box. So let me take you back in there and... Um, um, guys. <laughs> They're in the way. Um, actually, there's quite a few females in there right now. Um, normally, chickens, just so, so you have like a timeline. If you start from a baby chick, depending on the breed, it could take four to six months for them to be mature enough to start, um, you know, producing eggs or that kind of thing. If you don't want to go through the whole baby chicks thing, taking care of them, um, you know, and you just like instantly want to get eggs, you can buy pullets. Those are female hens that are of egg laying age. Obviously that's going to cost a lot more than getting baby chicks. Normally what I see is like $25, maybe a little bit more than that for a pullet. Whereas baby chicks, pretty standard, it's like $3 and some per baby chick. Um, I've never bought pullets because I've, I've enjoyed the process of raising my own baby chicks or I've bought baby chicks before. So, um, anyways, um, there's quite a few females in there right now. Um, egg laying boxes. Uh, if you do not put something for them to lay eggs in, they will put their eggs all over the place. On the floor, by plants, in the dirt, like, all over the place. It's kind of like potty training dogs, <laughs> you know? Like, you, you train your chickens, and it, it's not even training, really, because they naturally will go there. But, you know, you train them to lay their eggs in a certain box. There's a million ways for you to make boxes. I've made egg laying boxes out of milk crates. Um, you can make a box out of plywood. Um, you can use old tires. Like, a million, million things that you can use. And I pretty much have trialed all different things at some point. Um, the basic requirements for an egg laying box that makes a chicken happy because if they don't like that box they're not going to lay eggs in there they're going to start laying them all over the floor the eggs get dirty when they're on the floor that kind of thing um the basic requirements they want to feel safe they want to have a roof they want to have sides make it a little dark and even have like a privacy um curtain so to speak um this box right here was the very first box i bought or thing i bought for egg laying this is from Hen Gear. Hen Gear, um, I don't know if they sell on Amazon. I got it directly from their website. Um, and I'm so glad I went with that. And, and it was expensive. I'm, those boxes are not cheap. This, But again, I don't know how to build stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, I would make my own out of like plywood or something. So I got this from Hen Gear because after researching and everything, just the quality and uh, of this product is by far this has lasted me two years and will last probably 10 years more like ridiculous i'm in florida it rains here the elements break down things super fast this is solid metal it's sturdy it is still perfectly functioning and fine i've had other egg laying boxes like this one right here that i that i got from amazon i hate it very cheaply made i i think i've only had it for like six months it's falling apart like whatever it didn't come with privacy curtains so these, these chickens fight over who gets to lay their eggs in that hen gear box, okay? And this is a community-style box. Let me get down to, to that level. One second, guys. I want to grab my egg basket, too. Okay, so I got this basket here. I think I got this at the dollar store. Actually, oh, no, Five Below. Five Below has these really cute Easter baskets right now that are really good for um collecting your eggs but anyways um these are some that i collected earlier today they were on the floor okay and they got dirty nobody wants dirty eggs and if you didn't know it um clean eggs or well when chickens lay an egg 
there is a natural film on the outside of this egg. Um, if you do not wash this and it maintains that film, you can set this on the counter, kitchen counter for like three months, maybe even more, I'm not sure. Um, and it will, it doesn't need refrigeration, none of that. As soon as you wash this egg and you wash that film off, now you gotta refrigerate it because eggshells are porous excuse me and the pathogens and stuff get inside of there and make your eggs go bad so that's why you have to refrigerate them um that film protects it doesn't let things inside so ideally you want clean eggs you don't want dirty eggs that they went and laid in the corner of the back of the coop or you know whatever which was this one right here so my chickens for the most part lay all their eggs in this box or one of these boxes um i I have noticed since my flock has gotten bigger they um let me drop the camera down like i said so you guys can see this box and me opening and getting the eggs um my flock has gotten bigger this is a community style um man they're making some weird noises um this is a community style egg laying box and what that means is that there aren't divisions here they share like this space here um this was from hen gear i think this was their large size box that i think accommodates like up to 45 chickens something like that i can't remember if it was 35 or 45. so i noticed they fight over this box like if, <laughs> she's not happy that i'm right here but anyways there's i think three of them in there right now and they'll like kick the another one out and that kind of thing so they're getting a little crowded. I, I want to buy another one of these boxes. So there's two and there's less like fighting between them. So what happens is if they're fighting and they're kicking, you know, like the dominant alpha females are fighting with the, I don't know what you call them, betas, beta females, um, the, they'll go and have to find a different spot to lay their egg and they'll find usually it's like the darkest corner in the dirt, basically. So I want to get another box. So that'll help um, ease the problem. But chickens normally will lay their eggs usually in the morning, the majority of them, but sometimes they'll lay eggs in the evening time too. So this um, box, you lift up this bar here. Um, th also another thing, I love this box. Um, this box is, I forget the term for it, a rolling egg box, rolling egg box. So what that means is that the collection, the egg collection part of it is at an incline so that when they lay the egg, it slowly rolls, drops down, and gets collected in a separate area. When a chicken lays her egg, you don't want her to see the egg anymore. That will cause some chickens to want to eat the eggs, and that's a really bad problem if your chickens start getting a taste for eating their own eggs. You basically gotta like have roll egg rolling boxes everywhere. You don't want them to see those eggs anymore so that they'll stop that habit of like wanting to eat their own eggs that can be a problem so and um you know it rolls it away from them so that they're not pooping on them making them dirty that kind of thing and just collects them all in one spot so for me i really like that feature of having the rolling away style type of egg box now this bar here um it, it's more useful if i was actually present every day but this bar so the chickens normally need like a bar or something to like jump up and be able to get inside of their egg box um, but you don't want the chickens sleeping in here at night if they sleep in here at night they're pooping in there all the time and then if someone lays an egg in here that egg is going to get dirty again so this has a bar that it pops up to block them from going in there at night so if i was here physically every day i would come in here put this up at night so no one can sleep in there um hen gear does sell a automatic i don't know if this is also called a loosen bar or what but they have an automatic little device that you can buy that will close this at night for you if you want but i just haven't got all that stuff yet um it hasn't been too bad um also at the bottom inside of here it's like a plasticky soft material it's like a sheet you can pull the whole sheet out sorry you can pull the whole sheet out do you need to go all right um you can pull the whole sheet out and then clean it too so if they put on it or whatever it's very easy to clean this box so i love it it has every feature you could possibly want it's very durable it's gonna last you forever 
well worth the, the cost. I think when I bought this, it was like $250. Yeah. Um, but this has lasted me since day one. So I really, I really like it. But anyways, um, let's collect the eggs for the day. There is one more pen in there. I also think they really like having a privacy curtain. Like this other box here is just open, right? And I'll see them go in there, but it's definitely definitely not on the level of like, how much they love this box. So let me open up um, this box today. And I, I mean, for the most part, I mean, obviously I get these chickens because I wanted eggs, right? So egg production was of importance to me. But I really enjoy all the different egg colors too. So different breeds will lay different kind of eggs. Um, I've got Easter Eggers because they lay blue tinted eggs. I have olive Eggers because they lay like olive green eggs. I've got the white leghorns, they lay your standard white egg. I've got um, the French black copper Morans because they lay like a chocolate brown egg. So, I mean, they're just really pretty. <laughs> and um, so I got some of the breeds because of that specifically, not because of like my concern for production. So yeah, this is full of all the eggs. They roll out from underneath the hen because they'll get mad if you like try to reach and get an egg. Um, I don't know how easy it is to see the colors. This is a white regular egg from the white leghorns that I have. This is a large size egg. Um, this one, I want to say it's like a green color. It's probably from an Easter egger, I'm going to guess, like a minty green color. Um, I have brown eggs because, well, you know, I have chickens that lay regular, like, brown eggs. Here's, like, this is, like, a light tan color. I'll put a white egg next to it so you can kind of see the difference. It's like a peachy tan kind of color. Um, the black co or French copper morans lay dark chocolate brown um, eggs. They get darker than these colors right here. But different chickens of that same breed will lay different bear, uh, like color variations, so to speak. So some will just be brown like this. Some will be even darker brown, like chocolate dark brown. It just depends on the genetics of that, that particular French copper moran. But that's why I got them. I wanted those dark chocolate brown eggs. Um, these are like a medium um, brown color. Um, but yeah, how many chicken eggs do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, because I collected all of them yesterday. So this is today's. 17, 18, 19, 20, sorry, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28. Let me see if there's any more. She wants to get in there, I think. Uh, I guess that's it for today. Um, so like 24 eggs today. Look at that basket. It's beautiful. I enjoy the different colors. Um, I think there's some Easter eggers that will lay eggs that are have like a very light pink tone. And I, I even want to say there's some that lay like a lavender tone. I'm not exactly 100% sure. Um, but that's pretty much it when it comes to egg colors. Um, and I can't remember what the standard, like, egg color was. I think it was either all eggs used to be blue or brown. One of those two. But through breeding, through human involvement and breeding, now we have, like, all these other different colors. But I think the standard, it was not white. <laughs> we aren't, we're only used to white in the United States because that is, like, the number one breed, um, you know, used commercially the white leghorn or whatever but i believe in other countries like brown is like what they're used to why is everyone coming in here <laughs> they're all like gathering around me maybe because i'm taking their eggs that's probably what it is they're probably wondering what i'm doing all right so i'm gonna go move back outside and take your last questions because we've pretty much covered everything that I could possibly think of that you would have to know um, if you want to get started with um, chickens, right? And I hope I've convinced some of you to bite the bullet and do it. <laughs> One second, I'm going to go get some treats for them.
All right. Um, so I have wanted to get chickens for many years, many, many years, and just always thought, yeah, that it would be a lot of work. Um, but after getting them and putting these automatic type of setups in place, so easy, like easier than the cats and dogs I've had in my life. Dogs, you have to walk them several times a day. Cats, you have to clean, oops. <laughs> You have to clean their litter every day, you know, whatever. So, to me, in my opinion, with the correct setup, uh, chickens are easier than cats or dogs. That's just me, though. I'm trying to get them to, like, stay away so I can finish this up with you guys. But yeah, let me take your last um, questions here. I didn't look at the chat for a while, so I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit and see um your questions so one second while i try to work through all of this wow man there's a lot of questions you guys have a lot of questions um dang uh wow um lots of questions okay i'm gonna try my hardest to get through this guys um two by fours yes two by four wood for um for roosting bars um, what do you do about the door? Is that automated? Yes, I had showed it earlier. Um, I do have a little cutout with an automated sliding opening door, right? So that we don't have to wake up early and release these chickens every morning and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Sorry, still scrolling up here. Um, do they eat your garden scraps? Oh yeah, for sure. If I'm like pulling old crops out of my garden like at home I'll save it all in a box and bring it here so really nice way to get rid of stuff because otherwise in my urban like neighborhood I live in it's very hard to uh, throw stuff out sometimes so that definitely helps that I could just bring all of that biomass from my house here um, how many years do they live I'm not sure, to be honest. Obviously, it depends on the health of your chickens. Um, I want to say between 5 to 10 years, depending. They will stop producing eggs, or at least re a significantly reduce the amount of eggs they produce. Ah! She bit me! <laughs> Sorry, guys. It doesn't hurt if they, like, peck at you. It just scared me, because I wasn't paying attention. Um, I feed them um, dried cranberries. Okay, maybe... It um, so sometimes when I'm feeding the dried cranberries, I think they think like my fingers might be a cranberry and they peck at it. All right, I gotta hide the cranberry. They know this bag. They know what's coming. If <laughs> they see this bag, I'm gonna put this like over here or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, all right, so, um, trying to go back up to the questions. Uh, fermenting feed saves a lot too. Yes. Fermenting feed is when like you take grains and different kinds of things, you pre-moisten it so that they expand and then you feed that to your chickens. It also unlocks a lot of the nutrition as well, makes it more nutrient um, or more available to the chickens. Um, but because I am not here every day, I, I would do that. I totally would do that. Um, I'm not here every day. I, I just can't be, you know, fermenting and moistening up their food and that kind of thing um but that's what i would do if i if i lived with my chickens um how do you introduce new chicks to an adult flock um so yeah um there's a couple of things you can do here sometimes if one of my hens goes broody that means she wants to sit on eggs and hatch them she wants to be a mom and they don't get out of that broodiness for a while um you have to completely remove all the eggs don't let her see eggs don't let her sit on eggs excuse me to kind of knock that chicken out of wanting to be a mother and get that idea out of your head i guess so to speak um so for me if that happens it's not a big deal because i have so many hens if a if one hen or two decides to go broody i don't care i still get a lot of eggs but if you only have a small flock of like four to six chickens because you can't have any more or whatever, if one chicken goes broody, that's a big deal because now that's a significant cut on your eggs, right? 
So you'd have to remove all the eggs all the time. Like, don't let her see eggs. Don't let her sit on eggs. Um, so since I let mine go broody if they want, uh, they will naturally hatch their own chicks, right? They'll sit on the eggs, keep them warm for 21 days, and then they hatch in their chicks. The mommy chicken, hen, whatever, will take care of those baby chicks until they get to a certain age and they're, they're fine on their own. That is absolutely the easiest, most natural way to get more baby chicks, if you can do that, right? If you have existing chickens that go broody. Some breeds go more broody than others. I've definitely noticed the olive eggers I have by far, the olive eggers. Every single one of them goes broody. I haven't even noticed if any of the other chickens have gone broody. Like, really, it's always the olive eggers. So, um that's one way and if that hen hatches her own chicks and takes care of them she is part the hen is already part of the flock they accept her baby chicks if you go out and buy baby chicks or you incubate your own they're not going to get along <laughs> so i keep my baby chicks completely separate until they are big enough adults basically to where they can fend for themselves when I introduce them into the flock. That's just what I do. So I've like I, I've showed you guys, I have a mobile coop right here. I have the first coop I started with, that was the old greenhouse that I covered. Um, we lock down the greenhouse and make that our baby chicken growing area if, if I did buy like some new chicks from somewhere or something like that. Until they are a couple months old, like three, four months old, something like that to where I know if mixing them in, they can escape or fend for themselves if the other chicks attach or, you know, chickens go after them. Um, so then they eventually over time, they get along and they're fine. And plus I have so much space out here that they're not like in closed quarters Well, they will like fight with each other and that kind of thing too much. That's, that's just what I do. Um, all right, trying to find the, where these chicken or questions started. Um, first three chickens are three weeks old. When can I put them safely in the coop? Is it by age or their feathers? Um, I, I'd say it is safe to put new baby chicks in the coop when the conditions outside are good and you, and the area is completely predator proof. So obviously if it's too cold outside, don't, don't put baby chicks out there. Um, I wouldn't put, I don't know what the age is. Again, it depends on the breed, but three four months old maybe that's when you could start you know putting them outside actually you scratch that okay because when you when you have baby chicks the majority of you are going to have them in a box or a brooder is what we call it a box that's warm or whatever they will outgrow that box pretty quickly i have a whole another coop here where i can raise baby chicks so they're not outgrowing anything i can keep them in there for three four months if i wanted to before i introduce them into my flock if you're in a baby brooder they're going to run out of space it, at some point you're gonna you'll notice like they just need more space they're getting way too big that's when you got to move them somewhere else whether you have to put them in a bigger size brooder or now they're okay to go outside depends on the weather if it's nice and warm okay they can go in the actual coop now and you have to make sure your coop is predator proof um the only time i've ever lost a chicken was a snake got in and swallowed a baby chicken it was really gross <laughs> Um, so make sure it's just safe and warm and they should be fine. I'm trying to go back through the questions here. Um, where did you buy that box for them to lay eggs? Um, the website is called Hen Gear. Um, I don't know if they sell on Amazon. I got it directly from their website. Um, where did you buy that rollout thing? It looks... I, I think you mean the same thing, the egg laying box, it's from Hengear, H-E-N-G-E-A-R. Are there many vet type issues? Good question. I have not had issues health wise with my chickens. Um, obviously they can get diseases, stuff like that. Um, I have, I, I guess I've just been really lucky. They've been fine. I haven't noticed anyone being sick or none of that kind of stuff. Um, no one has got injured yet, uh, so I don't know what vet bills would look like if, let's say, one of my chickens broke her foot. I honestly don't know that yet. <laughs> but that definitely is something to consider because um, it, it's going to happen one day, right? 
it, it's going to happen one day. So make sure you know a good vet. Maybe ask like your vet a couple questions, like how much they charge for these services so you're prepared or what to do. Um, I will have to figure it out when that happens. But I've had my chickens for two years now, and I haven't had a vet bill yet. Um, so I don't know if I'm just lucky or is just maybe there's not that much to worry about. Um, okay. I think I've answered all your questions. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. It's Sunday. I have to get back to it um, with my family. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to learn more about chickens, there's definitely lots of stuff I did not cover in, in this class here. I am doing a whole chicken series right now um, with separate videos about different topics. So those will be coming on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me <laughs> to do all this stuff. Um, I am one person, if you didn't know. Um, I don't have a team of people. I'm not like that. Um, it, I don't know what level of a YouTuber you need to be to, to be like, oh gosh, I need to get a team now. I shoot all this, film it, edit, all of that myself, post it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I actually just hired a uh, part-time editor to help me with editing some of these videos. So that's going to help me a lot. Um, I also have a full-time job outside of all of this and my nursery and website seeds and all that that I sell. Um, that's totally not related to gardening. <laughs> I want to quit one day, but I'm not there yet. I get asked this stuff all the time. And so people ask me, like, how do you have the time to, do, to have chickens and bees and do all this? Um, I'm an extreme type A person. I do stuff and I'm, I like to stay busy. But finding ways to automate is by far how I'm able to do all of this. All the automations I showed you here with the chickens, I automate my garden as much as possible with drip irrigation. Um, I use weed blocking material. I, there's so many things that I do to achieve all of these things that I want to do with the limited time and make it successful. Because if I didn't have drip irrigation installed, my I'm not going to be a successful gardener. So, um, and I've um, not purchased all these things at once either. This is years of, of buying something here, buying that there. So, um, you know, for example, that box, uh, the egg laying box, that was two hundred fifty dollars when I bought it. That was a lot of money. But that box has lasted me since day one. I have bought other things and tried to make other things waste of money because they just end up breaking down. So. Anyways, um, that's um, a little bit about me. I'm coming out with that chicken series as I get to it. Um, so more to come. You know, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, all right, guys. So that's it for today. I'm thank you for spending some time with me. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you do get chickens or you have chickens already, um, tag me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, by far my favorite social media thing is YouTube and I'm not very present on the other ones because I love YouTube way more. Um, but tag me because I like to see what you guys are doing. Um, sometimes you guys put comments, um, tag me and stuff with photos and I learn a lot and I get ideas from the things that you guys do. So if you get chickens and you build a coop, let me see it. <laughs> I get ideas from this stuff too. I like to view like what I do, my channels, my social media accounts is kind of like an exchange of information. Um, I'm giving you information and you guys give me information too. So I appreciate all that. But yeah, if you get chickens, I definitely want to see um, what you guys do. Please do more of these classes. Um, the egg laying box is from Hen Gear. I think it's hengear.com. H-E-N-G-E-A-R.com. Um, these classes are very random. I don't know when I'm going to do them. So there's not like a set schedule. I would like to do at least one a month, but my bandwidth between all these things, it makes it really hard sometimes. I did have an upcoming class for um, March 10th about herb gardening. But I think I'm going to have to cancel and reschedule that because I'm going on vacation. That's the last weekend I have before I go on vacation. So I got to make sure my garden and everything is, um, you know, on drip irrigation and stuff and not die while I'm gone. Uh, so I'm going to have to cancel that class. And then from there, I'm not sure when I'll have more. It's starting to get really hot. My phone's overheat, um, you know, when it's hot or summertime and they shut off. So I can't like do classes. I can't shoot videos 
for a long extended period of time. It gets really hard. <laughs> it gets really hard in the heat here in Florida sometimes. Uh, so I don't know. Um, if you want to stay informed of, you know, when I'm doing a class, uh, I do release the dates and times uh, through email. That's probably the best way. So make sure you're joined on uh, my email group. I have a link on my website, jarasgarden.com. There's a, a tab at the top. I think it says email newsletter or something like that. Make sure you put your email in there. That way you don't miss, you know, when I do one of these classes. But yeah, um, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoy going live and getting to meet you guys and talk to you guys um, for a bit. Um, no, I do not sell fertile eggs for hatching. Um, I, I'm i not licensed with the chickens or none of that. So I don't sell any eggs or anything. But you can buy fertilized eggs and hatch them. That's another way that you can get some baby chicks. Um, oh, okay, great. <laughs> you saw me on TikTok. I used to love TikTok, but ever since TikTok shops, I can't stand it anymore, guys. I can't take it. Every other thing is a TikTok shop trying to sell you something. It's not fun for people who are educational-based. Like, I'm trying to teach you something. Um, it's just... It's not fun. Like, I don't like using it on a personal level anymore. I feel like YouTube is the last frontier here where they're not shoving all these things down your throat and aren't, like, Instagram and TikTok are throttling your views now because they want you to pay for it. Like, I'll get notifications from Facebook. If you want 50 more people to see this post, pay $50. It's like a ridiculous amount of money for the views. Sorry, there's a truck over there. Um, so that tells me they're throttling my stuff on purpose and that's not fun. Like I, it's, you know, as a content creator, um, you, you know, what's the point? What's the point then? I'm not going to pay for views. I'm not doing that. So YouTube's like the last frontier that hasn't done any of these things yet. And I hope they don't because that, well, I, I don't know what I would do. So YouTube is my favorite. If you're going to choose one place to follow me, it's YouTube. So thank you for subscribing. <laughs> And now I'm really um, starting to talk and go off topic. I think I've tried to say bye like three times. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, I'm going to say bye now, for real. So I hope you guys enjoy um, your the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me, especially if this was your first time. Uh, my channel is mostly about gardening, though, not chickens. I do like to put some of that information out there, but um, I encourage you to, you know, look at everything else that I offer on my channel. It's not just about chickens. Um, so see you guys later. Um, loved hanging out with you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.